so yesterday um after squats i was about to cry like no bullshit um i remember taking the weights off and like i started like you know like when your eyes start welling up with tears and before i used to see like people at the end of like ufc fights like in the octagon win or lose and people will start crying and i'm like i didn't quite understand because i was like oh it's just a sport you know and um if you win it's probably tears of happiness and if you lose maybe it's like the embarrassment or it's just the crowd so it adds that extra amplification you know but yesterday i was by myself and i was like what the fuck so to catch you guys up what happened was you guys saw last week's episode um i just hit a pr 450 42 smoked the fuck out of it and my momentum was like up here and i'm like dude like i don't want to jinx it but i think i'm squatting 500 plus at nationals which will be insane because squat has always been my weakest lift and now it's about to be my strongest at my oldest so i was so proud of myself but um the day after or that day actually because I, I squat on thursdays after we picked up taika from school um we found out that he had kind of like a like a school emergency and usually how my thursday schedules are it's i like to take a nap before i drive to la so i can drive safely and then i get into la i sleep i wake up the next morning and then i uh, go train at barbell before i shoot just kidding news but because of the incident at school we had to talk to him and do all the like important parenting stuff so i wasn't able to sleep so when it came around to do jujitsu i was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna just drink a little pre-workout this pre-workout will help me with um jujitsu and also keep me awake and alive while i drive for four hours like in the middle of the night so I didn't sleep, took my pre-workout, did jujitsu, pretty much ended up in LA at around midnight. And um, I was like, okay, cool. I'll go to sleep real quick, I'll wake up at five, and I'm about to hit the heaviest deadlift of this entire block. Because I had the pre-workout in me, couldn't sleep. Um, so I woke up at five like, oh fuck, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, but. I gotta do what I gotta do. We're trying to train for nationals, so suck it the fuck up and get after it. I wake up, I try to like warm myself up as much as I can, roll out, do all that, but nothing was really working. And long story short, as I was warming up to my top set, I ended up tweaking my back. And it was one of those things where I'm like, oh, okay, um, we've been here before. It's not too bad of a tweak. We just got to rehab it and we'll get right back on track. So that Friday, rehab like a motherfucker. Saturday, Sunday, hot bath, roll out, stretch. I, I did all my old sciatica exercises. And then comes yesterday. I was supposed to have my, on my secondary squat day, um, my, my 365, uh, I'll show you guys. My 365, moved slower than the 450 and when you like give something your all and maybe this is the first time i ever had in my life where i really gave something my all for so long for one thing to derail the whole thing i think that's when like it creates those tears you know and you're like fuck because you have so much at stake and not like actual shit like i'm not trying to lift to win a million dollars i'm just trying to lift to prove to myself who i am and know that i can accomplish what i think i can accomplish so like i think letting myself down is what like me not giving my best because against every cell in my body i know i probably should have just pushed that deadlift session back or just sleep in but it's my own like try to get after mentality that fucked me up. And just one session can destroy like months 
worth of momentum. So I was fucking sad yesterday, man. I was really, really, really fucking sad. Not to mention because I had all this lack of sleep. Like every time I um, go to LA and shoot Just Kidding News, I'm not sleeping very much. I'm fatigued, I'm tired, I'm stressed. So I even hired on a diet coach and my weight wasn't coming off. So come yesterday, my like I was like, fuck, I have work stress. I'm still in the 190s. I don't know why the fuck I'm in the 190s. I've been dieting for like two weeks now. Um, and my lifts were sucking. So I think it was just everything coming together. And you know, my kid just had a problem at school. It was just everything came together at once and it just stressed me out. And I was like, fucking that one moment where I think, where I thought I had that one thing going on in my life that provided positive momentum from everything else in my life. I'm like, that thing is crumbling too. That's when I like really, really like felt it. But um, here's a, uh, here is, all right, so this is 450, okay? This is what you guys saw, 450. Felt powerful that day. So much confidence. So much momentum, and I was like, fuck yeah, we're gonna smash. And this was literally yesterday with 365, which is a warm up weight. I'm like so hesitant. And then I was, I was like, fuck it, am I being a bitch? So I was like, okay, let's put 405 on. I'm supposed to hit it for a set of six. I was like, Stop being a little bitch, just get through it. And then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. You know, like I, I never really quit mid reps like that. And I think that's when I really, really got down on myself. Um, but yesterday, uh, Gio was really awesome. We went on a long walk, try to talk through all the problems that I'm going through, all the stress that I have from my work and everything else, sorted all that out. Hot tub twice, rolled it out. Um, talk to my diet coach, drop my calories just a little bit. And this morning I felt very, very positive because all of a sudden my weight drops from 190 to 187. So that is good. That's one stress out the window. I wake up, my back feels 80% better. I'm like, okay, cool. That's really good. So today's session, it's not really about going fucking ham or hitting any of the numbers. Um, I even talked to my coach and he's really cool too. Like he was like, for this week, he was like, should we adjust the program or anything? He goes, no, let's not adjust the program just yet. It was just one bad session or two bad sessions technically. He's like, instead of going RPE or weight-based, let's go based off a of pain cap. So lift as hard as you can, as, as long as it's a three out of 10 pain. And we'll push from there. And if we can't get back on track by Friday, we'll have to adjust for nationals. But if we can, good. It's just, we'll just call this like a little, little speed bump and we're right back on track. So I, I say that to say that um, I'm very grateful for having a lot of people in my corner, Gio, fam for my nutrition, and Kyle for my training, because being able to bounce off of them, all of them gave me a positive outlook and all of them gave me a proactive plan to chase while I get back on track. And I think the saddest part uh, after the squats too was also I started thinking about Fuck, a lot of you guys are following this too. How can I pivot the series? What, how should I change the name of the series? Is there a new goal to get after? Those are just fancy words of, I'm gonna quit, you know? And I was like, you know what? I don't even wanna think like that. I'm like, if I am injured, I wanna see it all the way through. Even if I pull 135 at fucking nationals, I wanna complete the goal. Cause that's what my goal is. I wanna push myself in powerlifting as hard as I can this year while I'm in this new division. And to me, it's kind of like crawling across the finish line. You know, I don't want to go, oh, just because my legs are broken, I'm not going to finish the finish line. I'm like, no, my legs are broken. We're going to crawl across. So um, today's my first session back. I'll be taking it slow, babying my back, see what hurts, what doesn't hurt. And then uh, we'll go from there. So someone that um, really inspired me yesterday too, and I don't know, maybe it's like, whoever's above, you know, trying to feed me words that I need. But um, Lane Norton, who's one of the OGs of Masters Powerlifting, like he's incredibly strong regardless of what division he's in. But he's one of the first people that I saw 
that was dominating uh, Masters powerlifting. And he posted something yesterday, like getting into PR range, and this means so much to me because I've tried to come back 12 times through hip injury, back injury, adductor injury, all that stuff. And I was like, damn, I'm being such a little bitch right now because I like this is my first year trying to do Masters powerlifting. And I have one little back tweak. And I'm about to fucking cry. And this will try to come back 12 times. And he's finally back in PR range, um, which I thought was incredibly inspiring because, you know, we all hear that phrase of like, it's not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you stand up. But that actual how many times, like how many times do people do that? People might do it once, twice, three times, five times. But for someone to do it like 12, I'm like, dude, that's really, really inspiring. And Masters powerlifting is a thing, man. It's like, I train way harder. I don't build muscle as fast as when I was 25. My strength doesn't go up as much as when I was 25. I do a caloric deficit. My weight doesn't drop down as quickly as it does at 25. I don't recover as fast. So it does almost feel like a completely um, different sport. Like it's the same body and it's the same everything, but the way your body responds and how you have to move, it's almost as if like strength gain, like powerlifting when you're in your 20s is like Bitcoin. <laughs> like it can go to the moon or down, it's like volatile. But uh, powerlifting when you're in the master's division, when you're in your 40, is like fucking silver or something. Like 3% every year, that's it, bro. So you better try your fucking ass off. and. In some ways, it actually does make it fun because you don't get ahead of yourself, you know? You don't, like, you know how many, like, 25-year-olds I know, they run one block with the coach because they see insane strength gains. They're like, what? I don't need him. Not only that, I'm a coach now. Taking clients, you know? Like, that's where all these 20-year-old coaches come from because they see their instant results. But these days, like, every five pounds takes me, like, four to six weeks to squeeze that out. So, yeah. Thank you, whoever's above. I needed that and thank you Lane Norton for setting one of the most amazing and most humble and inspiring examples of what it means to always push, get after it and expect nothing less of yourself. No, I'm not trying to get sexual for the camera. These are called cat camels. Um, and what I'm trying to do is get blood flow into the low back, the core, have my pelvis posteriorly and anteriorly shift to try to relieve some of the tension that's on my back. I, I didn't see anyone yet, so I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm just doing some of the protocols that I had from injuring my back before. I guess that's one of the cool things about Masters Powerlifting is that you have so much experience now that a lot of things you can use the tools from the past. So I'm gonna try to get my back nice and warm which is something I didn't really have to do before, you know, before I just jump on the salt bike, ready to rip. But try to get my back nice and warm and see if I can still squeeze out a good deadlift session out of today while maintaining that three out of 10 pain cap. Uh. Now I'm gonna warm up. When I'm dealing with like either an injury or some sort of like physical like impediment. That's usually my strategy. I like to address the physical impediment first before I warm up. Cause I feel like, or else you're just gonna warm up um, with your body in incorrect alignment. So for example, like um, if my shoulder's jacked up and it's like this, then what I like to do is if I wake up fix it and then get warm or else I feel like I'm warming just like this, you know? Because your body has all this fascia, which is kind of like the skin under your skin that holds everything together. And you gotta like break some of that up so your body can be in proper alignment. So I didn't want my pelvis to be shifted all weird. And then now I warm up my body and my low back and glutes feel like it's in alignment because it's warm, but it was actually out of alignment. So I wanted to do a cat camel first.
Okay, moment of truth. I definitely still feel the little twinge in my back, so I have to be very, very careful. But I'm gonna see which ranges of motion feel good and try to stay under that three out of 10 pain cap, like my coach was saying. Okay, the bar is good. That's a good sign. So far, so good. I'm actually gonna warm up squats a little bit just cause I could feel myself being a little bit hesitant down here at the bottom of the deadlift. And I don't know if it's because it's like tender or if I'm just being hesitant. So I kind of want to warm up uh, past the range of motion that's necessary so that I can make more intelligent and accurate adjustments. So let's get under here, see how that feels. Probably do low bar because low bar is a little bit closer to deadlifts. definitely a little bit tender so it's got to be careful but pain is like 0.5 out of 10 so I still got room to go which is good and to be careful I'm gonna belt at 135 it's not a joke I know this might look funny but I do not want to risk anything Feels tender, but still under a three out of 10. So we'll keep going. So had I not been injured, I was supposed to hit, I think 425, 435, or 430 for four. It's my secondary day, so I'm not supposed to go heavy, but we'll see how far I can go up to. <sighs> Try a little wider stance to experiment and that definitely did not feel good. So take that out. So what data did I gather there? Definitely feels tender, but pain didn't increase. So I can go up. The pain has still been one out of 10, which is cool. It just feels really tender. Almost like, you know, when like you bust nuts and then you touch it after, you're like, ooh, ooh, like that. Like, can I go again? I don't know, maybe, but ooh, like that. You know what I'm talking about. Ugh. Ugh. I am a little bit nervous, but I'm gonna be patient.
felt tender, but didn't feel bad at all. I'm gonna have to watch the tape. I actually have a question. See, this is why coaches help. Cause sometimes you're at a, a fork in the road and you know you don't know what to do. So I'll reach out, see if coach gets back on time. Hey coach, so I'm deadlifting right now and I know we have a pain cap of three out of 10. So my question is, um, I hit 315 and the pain cap is way below three out of 10, but the RPE feels like maybe like six or seven. Um, what should I go based off of? Should I go a little bit higher and push the RPE or, or yeah, push the RPE or push the pain cap? Thank you. See what he says. Because one side of me wants to go, let's get back on fucking track. If I can't hit 420 today, let's go 405. But the other side of me is like, hold the fuck on, recover, chill. And because you do have a heavy deadlift on Friday if you could heal in time. But I, I'm one of those guys that doesn't like to derail for too long, you know? So like, I already feel like I've derailed for like three or four days. I want to get back on. But I have a feeling coach is going to say, stay here and don't do anything stupid. So what I might do is maybe just put a 10 on each side and then keep that as my top set. So I'll be 335. Goal is to do four perfect reps. No injury. Okay, that's four. I need pain cap. Maybe two or three. Feels tender above the upper glute, but not not that it feels like it re-injured it, but just that it's tender. So we'll call it there and I'll work on my back offsets. At least I was patient with it. Trying to peel it off the floor. That's good. Back off set to 285. So one thing I'm also gonna do in between every set while I'm deadlifting is roll out. One thing I learned before uh, from prior injuries is sometimes like your body to protect itself, like that's the reason why like it spazzes out, right? Like why, mus why muscles get tight. So to protect the lower back, it'll spaz out. So even though while you're lifting and you're technically not re-injuring it, it'll freak out and then your body will go back to its old alignment in its protective form. So uh, I'm gonna try to like roll out a little bit to relax it and kind of like let it know it's okay. It's okay to like trust what we're doing. And so in between every set, hopefully that helps my body realign and adjust to not wanting to be overprotective. All right, first back off set of six just try to keep it patient get the volume in and it's important to get the volume in and the reason why you don't want to just take it off is because you can get detrained so you want your body with that pain cap where you get the volume in so you're still able to have a high work capacity um, while your body heals that way the minute your body heals you can bump up the intensity and the, you don't have to go through like um, a volume accumulation phase. So you'll literally save like three to four weeks off your program. So it's really important to keep the volume up um, and then just let my body heal. That way, the minute my body's right back on track, I'm already right back to doing sets of six, sets of fours and, and uh, can move on from there. So let's go.
Woo. It's tough going that slow. One more set. Sometimes it is hard to judge. Like what's pain, what's RPE. Cause I'm putting in max effort. Cause you know, like when you're moving things slow, it's kind of like tempos, right? It becomes that much harder. So just trying to finish the set, see how it feels. Any sudden spikes in pain to let go. So far, so good. So our first accessory is neutral grip pull-ups. I've been doing it this way just to get more range of motion out of it. You know, like the old school, either like prison or military style. I feel like I get a little bit more range of motion out of that versus coming to here. Probably helps out with jujitsu or whatever. I don't really know, but it feels more powerful. <sighs> Can't go as heavy, but you definitely get more range of motion, which I think is important in the long run. Ugh. I felt good. Last week I uh, just did 45 for the top set and then his body weight for the back offs. Today I was able to add 25 pounds and it felt good too. So I think uh, not having to hit the heavy deads was able to like make me feel a little bit fresher. So pushing it a little bit harder on the lats is good. In between, I'm kind of supersetting with these guys. I don't even know what they're called. I just made it up, but it feels really good to stretch out my lower back. Cause I think right now, because my lower back constantly wants to spaz out, they'll like keep overarching. So what I'm trying to do is like get my back it's like a fully like, kind of like the cat cam I was doing the, in the beginning and they fully like arched over position and just letting the weight pull it down while I work through like a range of motion that doesn't feel any pain and kind of just let it stretch out. It actually feels good. Like it feels like it's like, like the way my back feels, it feels like it wants to go like, uh. so I'm trying to like, like trying to bring it back. Let it know it's okay, it's okay. We have enough musculature to support you. You don't have to like be all like tied up like that. Oh, good. Push that a little bit. Now do a little of my back stretches with this makeshift belt squat. Ugh. Pretty soon it'll be that fucking old guy doing the weird exercises at the gym that everyone makes fun of. Literally, they know it's because he's been injured 7,000 times. So I'm gonna go really ham on these because this has a very close relation to deadlifts. 
you know, the form is need to keep midfoot pressure, keep the lats tight. And I think this will give me a good stretch at the bottom, which will be good for my erectors while giving my lats um, a lot of stimulus. So since I haven't deadlifted heavy today, I'm gonna try to push these and uh, even try to get a little stretch at the bottom if I can. Woo. My first couple of reps, I didn't want to move. And then once my lower back felt comfortable, I tried to give it a little stretch and it felt good. Ugh. 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 Can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you fill up the hot tub for me? Okay. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. I'm trying to do whatever I can to heal. So right after this session, um, because the jacuzzi takes a few hours, I'm trying to like have recovery immediately so I can get into the hot tub, relax the back, and then have a good like stretch session. I'm really trying to recover and get back on track. Like. My goal is for this episode to be the only one where it's down. Cause I feel like in this whole series, we had such good momentum. I want this one to be the only one where it's like a slight dip and then next episode right back on it. So just doing whatever I can. I don't want to waste time. Oh cool. My coach just got back to me. So he says, so the pain cap is there to fall back on. If you're feeling a lot of pain, uh, this is what supersedes everything. For example, you're under the RPE, but the pain is already at a three out of 10 then that is the most you should go for today. But if the pain is below and you haven't hit your RPE yet, then you can go up. Oh, okay. So pain is more important than the RPE. RP is more important than the ranges. So if you feel toasted and can't hit the range, then find a weight that'll keep you within RPE. Okay, cool. Did I do that? I think I could have pushed a little bit harder then. Because 335 I think was maybe out of two out of 10. But the RPE was pretty high because I was going so slow. No, I think I did, I, I did a good job of calling the weight. All right, that's good. I'm gonna drop the weight a little bit. Felt like some of my reps were more cheat reps. Um, so I wanna get a little bit more fuller range of motion. That was a good set. Had even locking my legs out like that, felt like a good stretch at the bottom. I actually felt really good, holy shit. Oh. Okay, done with that. Moving on to the next. Okay. If I can't power lift, I might as well bro out. So hitting shoulders. Feel my lower back. I 
that's pretty good. Considering my lower back is kind of like fragile, that's pretty good. But probably not gonna do that again. Take off some weight, go higher reps. The reason why I wanted to push it too is uh, I want it to be by nationals to also hit like 135 for eight. That's just like my own personal goal, you know? It has nothing to do with powerlifting, but I think we're all meatheads at the end of the day. So I wanted to have like really strong curl too. But I guess I don't have to wait for my lower back to heal. Since I got in a couple sets of cheat curls, um, I figured the last one, I'll do more strict, focus a little bit more on, uh, on like tempo too. <sighs> Just so I can get good contractions. While like keeping my back like, like relaxed. That was a good one. That was a good one. My last exercise is finished off with some abs. Uh, uh, trying to, on a deadlift day, the type of abs I like to do is to do like, what I believe is a more like an antagonistic motion. So when I'm doing squats, um, I can do all kinds of ab exercises like planks, Russian twists, all that. But for deadlift, because it's a hinge movement, I like to hinge the other way. So I'll bring my knees to my chest, or I'll do a straight leg, but I don't think I have a strong enough low back to do a straight leg. So I'm gonna just bring knees to my chest. I can't really push these too hard. It's like a feel. I might not even hang actually. It feels delicate. I might have to do it like this. It's definitely one of the tougher workouts of this series. Because I'm working against adversity. Um, it's not like there's a ton of momentum going through, you know? You know how there's like, like the last episode, for example, I touched the bar, feels good. Plate, two, three, you know, like, oh, hell yeah. Today was already like, touch the bar, hopefully I don't die. Oh, bar feels nice. 135, oh, shit. But it is what it is. And, uh, the mountain ain't worth climbing if it's gonna be easy, you know? So hopefully, um, the next episode I feel much better. I'm gonna be rehabbing this whole week, hardcore. And uh, hopefully it's just like a little hiccup. But thank you guys for following. And uh, we recently just dropped, oh shit, let me show you guys. We recently just dropped 
and I'm sure you saw the video already, the black letter collection. Um, we got three of these hoodies. I think they came out so sick. It's gonna be one of those timeless designs where like you can rock any year. You'd be like, oh shit, that's that black letter hoodie. We got it in gray, maroon, and olive. And this is a slightly darker gray than the ones we typically come out with, which is a light gray. I really like this one because it kind of gives it more of that like sinister look. So yeah, check that out, barbergate.com. See you in the next episode. And hopefully I feel way better. Peace.